I'm still in Hooter View Apartments. Um, this is what Dayton, Ohio looks like during the daytime. A whole lot of nothing. Look at that. Walmart. Sam's Club. Anyway, uh, this is the completion of our second day at Hamvention. And uh, we had a great time. We sold a lot of products. And you know, this 10-year-old Vio has pretty much saved the day. Um, we have, uh, well, what happened was, when we were setting up on uh, Friday morning, no, Thursday morning, today is uh, Saturday, we were setting up on, I'm sorry, Friday morning, um, we had to... Um, I actually, my, my first task was to get our wireless network set up uh, because each booth had its own uh, network drop. And uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the gentleman I'm with, um, or helping out for this, for this event, he brought an old Netgear router, an old one, and it would not broadcast wirelessly, and I could not get into the interface to, uh, to check it out. It wasn't giving me an IP address, and um, we had a compound problem here, and, I, and we didn't have a lot of time to fix it, um, because we had about an hour from that point to the opening of the event to get this set up so we could run our credit card transactions with the iPad. So what happened was, you got to figure, this is a very busy event. This is one of the biggest events that occurs every year in Dayton, Ohio, Hamvention. It's 1956, I believe. And uh, it is a well-attended event. Think of it like NASCAR for nerds. And we um, we had a rental car, and I, I, thinking quickly, I said, I tell you what I'll do. I'll run back to the hotel room. I'll get my laptop. Oh, I should backtrack. Um, the IBM ThinkPad that we were using um, appeared to be full of spyware. <laughs> and, like, I can't work with this. Anyway, I didn't have time to clean the spyware off to get the wireless network. I mean, the thing, it had, it was, it had like false proxies and everything. It's just a mess. So I uh, went ahead and I drove to the hotel room in dense traffic at 7 in the morning to pick up my Vio. I didn't think to bring it with me because I didn't think I'd need it. Now, this is a laptop that I brought just to check email with, thinking that's all it's really going to work for. This is all it's going to do for us. Anyway, so I went to the hotel room, I picked up my vial, and, um, we're not in the courtyard. Hey, our free wireless network is gone. You suck. Well, anyway. So, back to my story. I uh, ran back to the hotel room, I grabbed this laptop, and then I ran over to that Walmart over there at 7 in the morning and picked us up a nice brand new router. And uh, here it is. This is the box. Picked up one of these. I got this for about 40 bucks. The receipt should be in the bag. I need to get reimbursed for that. So uh, what did I pay for? $32.07. It's not too bad. That's with tax. I'm not used to paying sales tax. I live in New Hampshire. So anyway, I picked that up and I brought the laptop over. I had this up in minutes. And because this laptop was acting up, we needed something to run YouTube videos on. Um, some of our customers have made YouTube videos reviewing our products. So I, um, I queued those up on the VAIO and they played for, uh, so far they've been playing for God, two days straight. <laughs> and this laptop has been holding up like a trooper. I mean, it really is doing quite well. I'm very happy with this machine. Um, and this is one that I pulled literally from the trash. Nothing wrong with it. it. Works great. I didn't even have to rebuild the damn thing. So, anyway, because I'm at the world's biggest <laughs> nerd fest, 
um, and flea market, I picked up a new toy. So this is going to be a B Bishop PCM first. This is going to be a hotel room review of a machine that I just bought um, today at a uh, at Hamvention 2013. Before I show you this machine, um, I want to tell you a couple things about it. Now, I owned one of these machines several years ago. Actually, more like 10, 11 years ago. Yeah, yeah 11 or 12. It's been a while. I owned one of these. I lent it to a friend of mine for some reason who destroyed the machine for me. Uh, not as a favor, but accidentally. Now, I was very upset about this because I really liked this laptop. It was a great little system. And because I was, you know, very poor at the time, I was a kid, you know, high school kid with no real income, I really, 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 really wanted to have it, to, to fix it. And I went and I tried to find a new motherboard for it, and I couldn't. <laughs> they were out of my price range. So, so without further ado, let's take a look at what I bought at Hamvention 2013. Now, I went there with a few ideas in mind. If I had seen one, I was going to buy it. I didn't care what the price was. So I went around to the flea market section after I um, had some, we had some downtime in our booth. We weren't really getting a lot of foot traffic for a, a short period. So I went around and I went to the flea market to find myself something to bring back and uh, show it to my YouTube viewers. Well, here's what I ended up doing. I um, I ran into the Tech Knight, of all people. He came up to me and said, Mr. Br no, what did he say to me? He said, Brandon Bishop. And I'm like, oh my god, it's you, the Tech Knight. How you doing? It's great. I actually met one of my viewers for the first time, and it was the Tech Knight at Dayton Hamvention 2013. It's great when, when, uh, when you get to do that, you know? Well, anyway, I, um, I asked him if, if he had seen any computer vendors or vintage computers of any kind and he was telling me about a couple of uh, items that he had seen he actually saw an IBM PS2 and he saw a couple of Mac Classic 2's a Color Classic and a um, he talked about a Toshiba Libretto and he was telling me that he found some compact LTEs. And when he said that, my ears perked up because I've been looking for an L a good quality, you know, well cared for LTE for quite some time because I actually owned one uh, when I was in high school. I got it from a friend of mine whose dad was in the publishing business. And um, he was the editor of a magazine that's still in print today. And... Uh, after three years, the keys in his laptop completely wore off to they were shiny, and um, the, the thing just had so many faults, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit about later, but I took that machine and, and I used it for a little while until another friend of mine blew it up on me. Ay. But anyway, so when, he, when, when Tech Knight had talked about an LTE, I, 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 I listened, and so I went ahead and I... I wandered around the flea market area and I found a lot of what he was telling me about. I found the IBM PS2 which was just a I think it was a model uh, 55 it was one of the chunky desktop type machines and um, so I, I found that but the guy wanted crazy money for it. He wanted a hundred dollars for the damn thing and I'm like not really in my price range for a flea market <laughs> So I went out and I found the libretto. And I was like, wow, I'll buy this. I was ready to whip my cash out and buy it on the spot. There was no price tag on it, but I was willing to pay a little bit if he could get the price, you know, if we were on the same, in the same ballpark. Anyway, the guy who was at that booth, uh, or at that, uh, that uh, flea market site, there were three guys there. And none of them could tell me anything about it because I guess the guy who owned that machine was had left to go to the bathroom, and I didn't have all the time in the world. So I'm like, you know what? If it was meant to be, it was it was meant to be. I offered him some money for it. He didn't take it. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> but the libretto is is one of the earlier 
pocket-sized PCs that Toshiba made. And um, it was about the size of a pocket PC, actually. Um, one of those, um, that was the brand name, Pocket PC. P-O-Q-U-E-T. Unfortunately, that deal fell through. I went and searched for the Classic 2 and the Color Classic. Not that I was going to pay the 100 bucks that I, Tech Knight had said they were asking for it, because that wasn't going to happen. Um, I only brought $60 with me to spend for just spending cash because I don't want to come home with something that I don't need. <laughs> so anyway, I went, we went home. We, we finished the, uh, the, the, you know, that day out of the convention. And um, today we went out. I went out again because we're on our second day of, of selling. And I went out and I, uh, I found what I was looking for. I found the Compaq LTE and it was exactly what I was looking for in the condition that I was looking for. I mean, it just couldn't have been better. Everything about this deal was right. So I have it to my left, and I'm going to show it to you. Now this machine is dirty, but it's cleanable. And um, there is no plastic damage. It's fully intact, completely perfect for what I was looking. And it has everything that I need. I'm going to show this thing to you right now. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> this was the Compaq LTE 5000 series. This is a 5280. All the 5000 series compacts look just like this. Um, it's an upgrade from the Compaq LTE CX series, I believe. There were, there were actually a few other precursors, but they were all molded in this taupe, um, beige taupe color which was unique because their business machines were always this color. Their consumer machines, their consumer laptops, the Contora series, for instance, um, came in a charcoal black, more of a black than a gray. Now, somewhere in between. The LTE 5000 series was their business class workhorse for the 90s. Um, the the LTE spans um, back to the 286 era in the late 1980s, and the original LTE 286 had a detachable keyboard. It was pretty cool. And uh, the LTE series ended in about 1996 with the LTE 5000 series, and it was released in conjunction with the Armada series, or the Armada series came somewhere in the mid-90s era, like 95, I believe, is when the Armada had been released. And that was the, um, that would have been the executive's laptop. The Armada was a cooler machine because it was thinner, and it had some pretty interesting features. Now, this gentleman who sold this to me, by the way, I paid $15 with power supply, in the condition you see it in, which to me was worth it. Um, he actually had an Armada that I was considering. He would have sold it to me for $10. But it had no power supply, and I really... you got to realize, when you buy something at a convention and you fly out to the convention, you've got to pay to ship these items back to your home. <laughs> yeah, I can't fit it in my suitcase. So I'm going to send it back with our, um, with our convention stuff. Uh, we have, you know, big, giant bins for our convention stuff that's going to be shipped back next week. And that's how I'm going to get this thing home. I'm not going to check this in at the airport. It weighs too much, and it's just it's too fragile to just, you know, to, to ship it that way. Or to bring it home that way. So anyway, the LTE 5280 is what I picked up. And this has the multi-bay floppy drive. There, The CD-ROM drive was an option on this laptop that this doesn't have. So, to remove a multi-bay device, you simply pull this tab on the side, and the drive slides out. You've got to realize that this would have been in competition with the IBM ThinkPad series. The ThinkPad series had sex appeal, where Compaq didn't have the sex appeal. This was like the, the, the dorky... Um, the dorkiest laptop you could buy because it because it was white. Not that white people are dorky. Well, we are. Um, but 
it just it was the uncool laptop. I mean, it has some nice features and it's well made for what it is, but it just isn't that sexy of a laptop. To me, I think it's beautiful because I just like the style of it. I like these old compacts. They're inherently flawed because they're well known for screen hinge failures, um, more so in the uh, Contora and um, the 46 LTEs, but the Pentium era LTEs weren't so bad. A couple of features um, that are present on this, a flip down door, which uh, holds or conceals the PC card slot. Uh, this releases the battery. There you go. This is a replacement battery. This is not a factory original. And something about the fact the, the battery that you should know is that this panel slides open. I'll uh, put the camera down here. This slides over, which allows the battery to fit in the multi bay. Like so. If I pop this floppy drive out, boom, bang, swing. There it is. And now it's, if I had two batteries, it would be a two battery machine, but I don't have two batteries. The laptop that I had actually had two batteries. I, I, I got one from work. I was working at a surplus computer store at the time, and I actually managed to snag a battery from the parts bin. So mine had two batteries. Now let me show you how my friend blew it up. Yeah, I'm really mad at him for this. But that's okay. We managed to make to work something out. He actually bought me another laptop. <laughs> but this pops open. This is the hard drive bay. And here is what the hard drive ships in, or, or is carried in. It's in a can. I have to be careful because this is tough to remove. I think there's a latch underneath somewhere. Yeah, there is. There it is. Where is that latch? There we go. Pop the latch, I should pop right out. And there it is. So what he did is the machine was running, okay? And he slid the, the hard drive back in. Could have killed him. And what happened as a result is he took out the entire hard drive controller. Yikes. Yeah, I wasn't happy about that. Um, so I never did get my laptop working again. In fact, he took it for parts and gave me the um, the old uh, Apple. He gave me a PowerBook 140. Uh, I picked it out and he paid for it. Uh, we never did tell his mom. <laughs> she still doesn't know why she bought me a laptop. She never will either, unless she watches my channel. <laughs> that was that was 11 years, 12 years ago. Holy crap! That was 12 years ago. Oh, man. So on round back, we have a couple of uh, other features. This door opens up to allow the laptop to slide into its full docking station, which was another option back in those days. You could convert a laptop into a full-featured desktop, even with expansion cards, with one of those docking stations. And I could have bought one today, but I just don't have the room for it. Um, and this opens up to reveal a 9-pin serial, 25-pin parallel, and a DB15 monitor or VGA connector. And on this side here we have our audio in, out, and keyboard jack, which can be used with a Y adapter. And of course you've got the infrared in the back as well. One of the failure areas of these laptops is where these hinges screw in. Um, they crack right in this area and same with the other side and this one the reason I bought it is because it had no cracks I don't buy junk. I don't buy machines That are in con in a condition that is irreversibly um, Permanent I, I just don't do that So whenever I buy or acquire anything which is why I don't do a lot of eBaying um, vintage equipment anymore is because it's so hard to weed out the um, the physically abused and well-worn systems. This one fit the bill. This is the cooling fan for the Pentium 100 processor, or 120, 
and there's the volume control on the side here. Now this, I, yeah, this is the microphone port on the side. So let's pop this baby open. Oh, come on. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I can't. I need two hands. Okay, there we go. Let's pop this sucker open. Look at this. This is beautiful. This, to me, is a beautiful machine. Okay, it doesn't have the sex appeal as the IBM ThinkPad, but it's pretty close. First thing you notice is the display housing contains two stereo speakers. These are the, uh, and this is another thing I look at, the, the uh, display latches, which are made of plastic on some of these. You want to find one without broken latches. See, mine had one broken latch. Yeah, so this is in way better shape than the one I had 12 years ago. Um, the other thing is, now, because the speakers are in the display housing, there's a very thin cable that runs, that drives them. Uh, on mine, the cable was gone. It didn't work. You can only hear the sound when the display was like here, which was kind of useless. Um, another feature that's um, very common on the mid-90s uh, Windows laptops is this LCD bar, which contains all the status indicators. This was a high failure point for these laptops, and this one has a very minor problem with this, which I can fix, um, I, and I will be fixing that. But some of the indicators don't come on when they're supposed to. Compaq, like Toshiba, um, and IBM, and AST, and maybe even some Dells of that time period, made extensive use of the track point, AccuPoint, AccuStick, there's many names for it, eraser head, mouse, yeah. And these are something that a lot of business laptops had. Consumer notebooks, not so much. Business laptops had this. The earlier LTEs, the 46 uh, era ones, you would actually hold like this, and they had a trackball built right into the display housing. And uh, the buttons would be on the reverse side of the display. Um, I have seen a lot of those. I've never owned one because every single one I've ever seen has had cracked hinges. Just something I thought I'd mention. Um, this is the sleep button and the power button. Typical of compact laptops, again, of that time period, they always had a sleep button next to the power button. The Contour series had that feature as well. This is a very typical compact keyboard. Um, very similar, once again, to the Contour, except for the uh, layout is slightly different. The Contour didn't have the insert home page up buttons up here. I believe they were integrated somehow. Um, I don't recall my contours ever having this bump out. This does have a built-in microphone. It's located right here. And of course, being from the late 90s, or mid to late 90s, this laptop was made in about 1996, if I were to guess. And of course, you've got your trackpad buttons. Now, talking about the one I used to own, the 5150, the keyboard on mine was worn completely smooth. There were very few characters still remaining on the keyboard, and the ones that, uh, some of them were, were almost worn through. It was owned by the editor of a magazine. I mean, he did a lot of typing. And, uh, you know, these some of these silkscreen um, letters would wear off. The laptop he uses today is a battered to hell. I don't even know how it still works. But anyway, he was also a heavy smoker, so the laptop went, oh my god, when I got it, it was, ugh, it was so nasty. It was given to me, I mean, I didn't complain. I needed a laptop, and he had one. He's like, hey, you want this? Sure, why not? The one I had, oh my god, it was, it was just, it was ratty. It was covered in tar, it was full of, the keyboard was filled with ashes. It was so hard to clean that thing. And then when my friend broke it on me, I was so heartbroken, and I put a lot of work into it. This button didn't work. I ended up disassembling the actual switch, and I replaced the copper disc inside there, the contact disc, and I got it working again. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. I, I, this laptop was in the brink of death, and I brought it back, and then I lent it out, and, I, and my friend took the drive out while it was running and put it back in again. I, ugh, anyway. Let's power this baby up. So as you can see, some of the indicators come on instantly, like they're supposed to. 
Um, so I'm going to show you the ones that don't work. And there's a few. This got this got this has 32 megabytes of RAM, which is upgradable, I believe, to 64 megs. And you can just cancel the count up. Check. The clock battery is stone dead, so it's going to error out on us. Let's see how that does. There we go. Oh, no, it didn't error out. Sweet. Now this mouse driver that keeps loading, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that out of the auto execute batch file. So the hard drive indicator works. I haven't checked the floppy indicator, but we're gonna see how that works in a minute. I'm gonna try to make it read a floppy that doesn't exist. The sound indicator works. If I mute the volume, this comes off as it's supposed to. It does have Windows 95 version B. But it is missing all of the system drivers, which I need to I need to install those um, right quick because all the system drivers are missing for sound, video, God knows what else. If I do an about or uh, check my system preferences here, properties, system, devices, hardware, device manager. There we go. We're missing the audio device, and we don't have the correct display adapter. Or maybe we do. Maybe we do. That can't be the right driver. Let's, uh, let's see if we can. Okay, the floppy light doesn't work. Oh well. Now, let's see here. ESS audio driver didn't load either. I wonder why go back there. Now the one I had, the display was was very dark. Um, this one's pretty bright and you've got your brightness control here. This is an active matrix display which is a, a godsend because some of the less expensive models had passive matrix and yeah you know, they just suck. So I don't believe this is the correct display driver but uh, let's see why this audio device doesn't work. Not present, not working. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do a. Um, I'm gonna have to get the OEM drivers from Compaq. They are still on the website. Last I knew, they're buried, but they are there. Thank God. <laughs> and uh, we'll be able to get that going. But. Yeah, the problem is I can't increase the display color depth. It won't let me do it. It's stuck in 16-bit color. Or 16 color, I'm sorry. Maybe if I lower the resolution. No, I shouldn't have to. Come on, really? Here, let's see what that does for me. This is a cool laptop because it's it's in such great condition and, and finding one in this condition is not easy. Um, so yeah, the native resolution is 800 by 600, so this isn't going to work for me. I really don't have much else to show you. Um, I am going to clean this up, but when I get it home, of course, and uh, figured um, you know maybe. Uh, Maybe if I do some more work to it, I'll do another update video on it. But um, thanks for watching, and if you have any comments, please uh, let me know. And once again, Tech Night, it was great meeting you. Um, I uh, hopefully I'll have an opportunity to come back to Ohio, and and we'll we'll talk again. Alrighty, have a good night, guys.